is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest had a visitation from the Lord for three months and he was downloaded revelation from the Word of God so that all of the promises of God will be activated in your life. And it's wonderful that superstars yes. Yes. have it activated, but my Bible says we only have one superstar, Amen. and his name is Jesus. Amen. And I'm telling you, he is so charged with and filled with new revelation that you will never, ever be the same. Great. Hello. You, you know, Keenan, uh, you provoke me to jealousy, and that's what you Gentile believers in Jesus are supposed to do to us, Jewish believers in Jesus. Amen. But at 15, the Spirit of God opened your eyes, and you began seeing things. Uh, was it a little scary at first? It, it was, Sid, at first, because uh, without a mentor there to really mentor you mm -hmm. in the supernatural, uh, you have to kind of fend for yourself in a way. And uh, what God began to do with me is he began to unload, or download, rather, um, discernment, a spirit of discernment of spirits. And I began to see people and meet people after I got filled with the Holy Spirit that uh, had spirits of depression, uh, spirits of rejection. You knew that? How, how did you know it? Did you sense it? Did you hear it? Did you see it? Both, actually. It's, it's kind of an interesting thing because in the spirit realm, uh, we don't see with the natural eyes. We see with our spiritual eyes. And so I was able to see, uh, sometimes it would be like weights on people or you would see a cloud, like a dark cloud over somebody or something like that. And I would instantly know that they were dealing with uh, rejection, for example, or a spirit of depression. And so God began to do that for me at a very early age. Now, in 1996, you had a vision that's about ready to take place now. Tell me about it. In 96, I, I had a vision from the Lord. God began to speak to me. Again, I was a, a young believer, both in my walk with Christ and also my walk with Jesus and also in uh, my age, actually. And God began to speak to me about the, the coming age of the church, uh, that God's raising up a generation of people that are going to walk in a reverential fear of God. They're going to walk in an authority, a kingdom authority, and they're going to begin to speak things into the atmosphere, and they're going to materialize. These are going to be young people. They're going to be teenagers. They're going to be uh, college students that are going to flow in the supernatural and purity, Sid. Now, now, what we're seeing, unfortunately, right now, is the opposite of what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> but yet, because of what you saw, you know it's here. Absolutely. It, it, it's like this close to being here. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's here. It's just a matter of, of time, really. But, but I'll say this. It starts with the Word of God. Jesus said something very profound in the Gospel of John. He actually provoked the Pharisees because he said that your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they're dead. He said, but my words are spirit and life. In other words, he literally, in the Greek, that's the word zoe. It means the same life that's inside of God. The word of God has the power to release the very life that's inside of God. When we speak the word, 
we're not just speaking something with an audible voice, but we are literally said speaking forth spirit and life. And the more people do that, the more the word, the spirit of the word will transform their lives. Uh, you know, Keenan, when I hear you speak, I want to run and grab my Bible. <laughs> I mean, you're making me so hungry Amen. for the word of God. Okay, Amen. in 1997, you heard the audible voice of God. I did. This was another situation. My father was, uh, he loved to fish. And we were coming from a trip in Pensacola. And I was looking out the window. I daydreamed a lot. Don't tell anybody, but I used I to do that. So it's our secret. <laughs> but I used to daydream, and I was looking out the window, and I saw the clouds open, and I heard an audible voice of God that said, I want you to preach my word. And it just resonated in my spirit, said. And that was the first time I heard the call to ministry. Okay, but then in 2008, you had visions that lasted for three months with a major call of what to do in ministry. Uh, tell me about that. Well, actually, uh, my wife was, uh, she was newly pregnant at the time. Actually, we lived in a little apartment that didn't have a lot of windows or anything, so there was, wasn't really a lot of light at nighttime. It was very dark in our bedroom. Well, God began to wake me up at 3 a.m. in the morning and I would see a door open, a door of light. Hmm. And I would hear the Holy Spirit say to me, behold, I've set before you an open door. I've set before you an open door. And I really didn't know what it meant at the time, but then God began to show me what he was talking about was the book of Revelation chapter three, verse eight, right. where Jesus declares to the church, behold, I've set before you an open door. But he said something very key, Sid. He said, you have kept my word and not deny my name. And so what God began to unfold to me is that the door that he's talking about is really the door of revelation that comes to the church when we keep his word and we don't deny his name, which is really a door of authority because the name of Jesus is the authority of Jesus. As we keep the word of God and we stay in the authority of his name, a door of the supernatural is open to the church. Now, you are so strong in your conviction and your, your belief. How did you get so strong? I Serious, got, I mean, how? Well, you know, Sid, it's a, it's a matter of choice. I believe every believer has to come to this place. You're going to decide which side that you're on. You're either going to be on God's side or you're going to be on the world system. And the world system has proven to us, Sid, that it does not work. The healthcare system is failing. We can't trust... Uh, the government. We can't trust uh, uh, the systems of this world to provide for us. We can only trust the word of God, Sid. And I've made a decision, me and my whole house, that we will serve the Lord. We're not going to, we're not going to move. Uh, do you want to make that decision? Do you want to make that decision? I want him to teach a little bit and it'll be easy to make that decision. Don't go away. Kenan Bridges had a visitation from the Lord for three months where he received keys on how to walk in divine health, miracles, and signs and wonders. Now he wants to mentor you. Call now and get Kenan Bridges' book, Possessing Your Healing, and his audio CD teaching, Release the Supernatural, plus his 54-pack Possessing Your Healing scripture cards. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9169. His book and audio CD teaching will help you become aggressive with your faith to possess every one of God's promises for your life. Find out three priceless keys to releasing your healing. Partake in communion in a brand new way to receive your supernatural breakthrough. Experience supernatural financial provision, restored relationships, emotional and physical healing. You will begin to understand the secrets, the keys of the kingdom that can release this supernatural power in your life. Plus, receive this handy 54-pack of Possessing Your Healing Scripture Cards. Begin exercising your faith and confessing God's Word to release more miracles. Don't miss out on getting Kenan Bridges' book, Possessing Your Healing, and his audio CD teaching, Release the Supernatural, plus his 54-pack Possessing Your Healing Scripture Cards. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9169. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 392 Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9169 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural.
Hello, Sid Roth here with Keenan Bridges. And uh, Keenan, uh, the, well, the Word of God works in your family. It works when you teach it to other people in your congregation. Yes. Uh, tell me, when you read a promise, Jesus said, that if you speak to a mountain, the mountain will move. I know you literally believe that. Have you moved any mountains? Actually, I have. I've moved several mountains in Jesus' name. But one that really comes to mind is my son. Uh, when he was very young, my son Isaac is our last born son. I like that name. I'm sure you do, Sid. <laughs> um, that's my last born son. And um, actually, he was born with a hernia in his belly button that was really big. It was really wide. But my wife and I, we have been meditating on Mark 11:23. Where Jesus said, if you move the mountain, if you speak to the mountain and not doubt in your heart, but believe in what you say will come to pass, you'll have what you say. So I, I took God at his, at his word. I said, well, God, we don't want this herniated belly button, so we're going to speak to it. And so we begin to speak to it. And we said, uh, belly button, go down in Jesus' name. In four hours, it shrunk. Uh, you and your wife saw it shrink. We saw it shrink, you. literally. What did this do for your faith? It, 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 it ignited my faith. It makes, because we need to know that the promises of God work. And so when we see something happen, it builds our faith. But le let me say this. There's a, there's a young lady right now. Your name is Danielle. Danielle, and you've been dealing with an autoimmune disorder. And God wants you to know that you can speak to that mountain of autoimmune disorder, and it must obey your voice. Don't doubt, believe God. Your, wife ha your wife's been hit with a lot of sickness. I guess this is your laboratory. My la <laughs> your wife's yes, laboratory. She is, she uh, is. Your wife had an irregular heartbeat. She did. Tell me about that. Well, uh, it happened, uh, it was actually before my daughter was born. My wife started having an irregular heartbeat, and it mm -hmm. lasted for almost three years, Sid. And uh, we were going through this challenge, and we decided that. And it's, it's frustrating when you're in the Word of God and you're preaching the Word of God and things begin to happen in your life, it can be frustrating. And so... Uh, but you know what? I believe it's throwing at you to stop you from what absolutely. you're doing. But absolutely. But instead, what the devil meant for evil... God turned God, it around. Yeah. He did. Yeah, and that's I like it. that verse. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So we were, we were actually in a meeting, and my wife, uh, uh, there was a, a man of God that was speaking, and my wife released her faith. They received the word of knowledge and said, someone has an irregular heartbeat. My wife released her faith for healing, and immediately said, her heart became regular in that moment. And it's never going back again. I like that. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the best medical science can do is they, they take these two paddles and they put shocks on yeah. you. I, I like that much better. That's right. Uh, you know, you were teaching, and I was fascinated about the Passover and communion and the Exodus, and there were uh, not one feeble. Teach a little bit about that. Well, the Bible talks about in Exodus that when the children of Israel, they came out of Egypt, uh, the Bible says uh, right before they came out, they were instructed by God to perform the, the Passover. And they were supposed to eat unleavened bread and they were to roast a, a lamb and put the blood on the doorpost. Well, the Bible says the deaf angel passed over. And we see that in scripture and people teach on that. But what we don't focus on a lot is what happened after that, Sid. The Bible declares in Psalm 107 that there were none feeble among them none sick, and that word means sickness. Now, you have to imagine how many people would be sick after 430 years of slavery with no health care. There no. would be lepers, there would be all kind of people with diseases, but the Bible says when they partook of that Passover... Yeah, you know what I'm thinking? The government doesn't have the answer for health care. That's but right. But God has the answer for health care. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, Sid, what the church needs to understand is that God is a covenant God. He's a covenant God. What that means is that he must, and I want to be clear in what I'm saying, he absolutely must honor his word. He cannot. God says in Psalms that he has set his word above all his name, which means that God is, he has obligated himself to honor his covenant. And Passover is a covenant. And what, what happens is when they took that Passover, 
it released the supernatural power of God and they were healed instantly so that none of them were sick. But guess what, Sid? The same thing is available to the church today. Because you know what? That was a shadow. Now, if on the shadow of the substance, uh, what, how many, uh, a couple million people? That's right. Of all ages, coming from slavery, That's right. horrible health, no doctors, no lawyers, what a world. <laughs> uh, and, but there wasn't one. I mean, this, this is mind-blowing mm. to me, Keenan. That's Not right. Not one feeble among them. Not one that had problems with their memory. Not one that had cancer. Not one that had heart trouble. Not one that had arthritis under the shadow. What happens when you come face to face with the real thing? When we come back, we're going to do that. Promise you. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Our world is rife with comparisons about what separates us. Day after day, we go about our lives with tunnel vision. But scripture tells us how Messiah broke down the wall between Jew and Gentile, allowing for the creation of one new man, one new humanity. This spiritual completeness is set to usher in the greatest move toward God the world has ever known. Sid Roth has discovered scripture's key to reaching the Jewish people with God's love. One new humanity opens the door for God to move in signs and wonders, and all will see the evidence of the invisible God promised in Scripture. At SidRoth.org, you'll find mentoring tools to empower you to share how one new humanity is critical to bringing multitudes to know God. You'll understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church, and how all the nations of the earth will experience blessings unseen in human history. Log on to SidRoth.org today and learn how one new man is the key to unlocking God's greatest blessings. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I'm 14 years old. This morning, I watched It's Supernatural about angels and warmth poured on me. It made me cry. God healed me of stage four inoperable cancer. It is a real blessing to have It's Supernatural to watch each week. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at SidRoth.org forward slash praise. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Pastor Keenan Bridges. And on the last segment, we were talking about the Passover. And Yeshua, Jesus, is the Passover lamb. But the power of the lamb in Passover was so powerful that a slave nation went into the wilderness for 40 years. They should have been sick. They should have been dying. They should have had every disease known to man. Over a million people, children, elderly people, not one feeble among them. And that was just the Passover lamb was a shadow of the Passover lamb, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. Tell me about the substance. I love the shadow, but we have a better covenant with substance. Tell me about that. Amen. Actually, Hebrews talks about the fact that we have a better covenant built upon better promises. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul the Apostle highlights the, the, uh, the communion. And he talks about how Jesus, when he, right before his crucifixion, he says, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This is the new covenant shed in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So what we begin to see, Sid, is that Jesus, in fact, is our Passover lamb. He has become the sin offering for all of God's people. And what happens is the, the, when, we, when we begin to understand this, we understand that God entered into a blood covenant with us with the shed blood of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, you'll see that Jesus, the Bible says in Isaiah 53 and also highlights in 1 Peter 2.24, that he bore our sins and carried our diseases. So in fact, the sin and the disease that were curses from Adam were placed on Jesus and they were abolished, which means that when Jesus was on the cross, six and a half hours, that was being done for us. 
So now you and I, Sid, have a legal right to walk in divine health. We have a legal right to speak to the mountain of cancer. We have a legal right to speak to the mountain of disease and infirmity, and it must obey our voice because Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. All right, give me an example. Um, MS, the symptoms started coming on you. How did you even know they were symptoms of MS? I knew there were symptoms because I had family members with multiple sclerosis. And uh, actually, a, re a family member contacted me, and they began to tell me that they were diagnosed with MS. Immediately after their diagnosis said, I began to experience symptoms myself. Uh, I would lose feeling in my legs for several weeks. Uh, I would lose balance. I would have what would be considered MS attacks. And this went on for several weeks. And I began to pray. I began to pray. And as I was praying, Sid, the Holy Spirit spoke to me one day and reminded me of 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says that he was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And the Holy Spirit said, I want you to stop asking me to heal you because I've already done that. What I want you to do, I want you to thank me for perfect health. So what I began to do, I began to thank God. I would take the word like medicine, like people take pain pills. I would actually ingest the word like medicine because the Bible says in Psalms that he, he sent his word and healed them of all their destruction. So we can actually eat the word of God, as Jesus talked about in, in Luke 4, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So when we meditate upon the word, see, we're actually feeding our spirit man and the life of God's being manifested in us. And I did just that, see, and as I began to do that, the symptoms disappeared and they never came back again. So they were, they were lies. They were literally illegal. They were illegal. They were illegal. They did not have a legal right to be in my body. As a matter of fact, when we talk about uh, Passover or communion, uh, my wife was diagnosed with diabetes. Uh, and this was very frustrating for her. And uh, I began to pray with her and everything. And uh, we took communion. And as we took communion, in, within a few maybe days or maybe a week or so, we went back to the doctor and the doctor told her that you do not have diabetes. That's the power. Okay. Someone knows what you just said, prayed, and nothing happens. What would you tell them? Well, you know, it's very interesting because I, I have seen this, experience this, even in my own life, Sid. Remember, I talked about that door of Revelation, and Jesus said in Revelation 3.8 that you have kept my word, kept my word. As a matter of fact, when the Bible talks about in Mark 11:23, it says, if you shall not doubt in your heart, well, really doubt is a belief system. It's, it's, it's more than just an emotion. It's a way of thinking that contradicts the word of God. And so what happens is you and I have to train our spirit man to where there are no other alternatives to the word of God. And that happens when we internalize the word and the word is more than just a principle or something that we mentally ascend to. You, you talk about you hear it inside of you, not what you feel, sense, smell, or taste. Absolutely. You, explain that. Well, we, the church has to come to a place where the Word of God actually becomes our reality. It, it has to become what's real to us. Uh, when, when sickness comes to me, I already know, because I've trained my spirit, that sickness does not belong. It's, it's, I'll tell you what, right now, there are people that are fighting sickness. I want you to pray for them at this moment. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I, I thank you for your children. Lord, I thank you that right now, in the name of Jesus, that you are quickening someone right now. You are quickening your children, and you are giving them the gift of faith. Your word declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. God, I release faith to your children now, and I speak life to them now. I command cancer to die in Jesus name. I command autoimmune disorders to cease. There's someone even with a, a, a retina detachment is being reattached right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare this in Jesus name based on the shed blood of Yeshua right now. You know, there is a scripture that is coming to me that actually you taught on uh, and you shall know the truth 
And the truth is an idiom for intimacy with God. No, the word no, Adam knew Eve. Adam had intimacy with Eve. You shall know the truth. Hey, you shall have intimacy with the truth. What is truth? God says, my word is truth. You shall have intimacy with the truth, the word of God. And the word of God will make you free. I want to be free in spirit, soul, and body. Start by making the word of God, Jesus, your Lord. Repent to your sins and ask him to live inside of you and begin to eat the word and have such intimacy that just like Kenan, you'll hear the word inside of you, not the things that are external, that are temporary. You'll have the eternal inside of you. That's what you need. Kenan Bridges had a visitation from the Lord for three months where he received keys on how to walk in divine health, miracles, and signs and wonders. Now he wants to mentor you. Call now and get Kenan Bridges' book, Possessing Your Healing, and his audio CD teaching, Release the Supernatural, plus his 54-pack Possessing Your Healing scripture cards. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9169. His book and audio CD teaching will help you become aggressive with your faith to possess every one of God's promises for your life. Find out three priceless keys to releasing your healing. Partake in communion in a brand new way to receive your supernatural breakthrough. Experience supernatural financial provision, restored relationships, emotional and physical healing. You will begin to understand the secrets, the keys of the kingdom that can release this supernatural power in your life. Plus, receive this handy 54-pack of Possessing Your Healing Scripture Cards. Begin exercising your faith and confessing God's Word to release more miracles. Don't miss out on getting Kenan Bridges' book, Possessing Your Healing, and his audio CD teaching, Release the Supernatural, plus his 54-pack Possessing Your Healing Scripture Cards. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9169. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 392 Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9169 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. I have two guests that started watching It's Supernatural and got hooked. And today, they're doing the same things, and the people they're teaching are doing the same things that my guests are doing. I was talking to one of them a little bit earlier, and he said, anything I see on your show, God has shown me, I can do. But I've got a, I'll go a step further. Anything my guests can do, you can do better. Yeah.